Hey, how's it going? Hope you're having a shit one. What's in my camera bag? In my last What's in My Camera Bag, I was using this Crumpler Creator Kingpin bag. I've now upgraded to the Vanguard VO Select. This is the 48BF version, mainly just because I needed more space, which is always the case. Every time you upgrade a bag, it's because you need more space. See, the Crumpler bags, this one was great. I had this for about two years. I've now decided to move on to something even bigger because I just wasn't loving the layout of this anymore, even though it did make like a pretty good hybrid travel bag, but now it's time to actually start taking camera bags seriously and get a completely dedicated camera bag. Pros of this bag, it completely opens up like so. So that's really nice. Versus my old one, it had three different sections to it. And if I had different lenses all over the place and I was rushing around, I was actually getting quite frustrated with it. So that's really nice. I have just one, basically <laughs> one giant opening for all of my stuff. Nice quick access, right? The downside to that is it's not on the back side. You don't open it up this way from where your back is. You actually put where you wear it, you put that on the ground and then open it up like so. I would say is a negative because well, you know, basically sometimes I'm out in the sticks shooting in some random location and maybe it's just rained or there's a bit of mud on the ground. I've sort of got to think about it because wherever I put it down and I pick it back up, that's then going to go on my back. <laughs> so I will never be able to wear a white shirt of any kind because of this camera bag now. So that's why I can't have nice things. My main photography camera is the Sony a7R4. I'm running pro grade. 128 gigabyte SD card in it. Extremely fast writing SD, which I do need for this camera since it is 61 megapixels. And when I'm doing burst shots, I need things to be able to write fast so I can continue using. So they're great SD cards. I bought this camera in 2019 and it's pretty much been to hell and back with me. It's been through every rainstorm, every snowstorm, sun, dust, sandstorms, whatever you, whatever I've thrown it at, whatever photo shoots I've been on, I've been using this camera. Yeah, I could upgrade to a Sony a7R5, which is the next model above this one. I'm still really happy with it, I guess, and I guess I just feel at home when I hold onto this camera. And if it ain't broke, you know, don't fix it. The next camera is the Sony a7S 3 It's what I'm currently filming this video on actually. But to be honest, this what's in my camera bag video, it's gonna be a bit different because I'm starting to rack up quite a lot of gear now. So it's sort of like, what do I choose to put in my camera bag video rather than what I'm actually lugging around with me 24 seven. So the a7S 3 is a phenomenal camera. And when I'm out on bigger photo shoots or we're doing a specific type of YouTube video, uh, I'll definitely be using it for B-roll and filming and whatnot. What I've actually been shooting my YouTube videos, especially my POV videos on, is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So any of my most recent POV videos in the last 12 months have all been shot on the iPhone 14 Pro. But I've now recently picked up the iPhone 15 Pro and from videos from now on after this video is shot, especially in my POV videos, I'll be using this one. My reasoning for that is because the cameras on these phones are starting to get stupid good. The iPhone 15 now shoots in log, which I'm really excited to test out and basically start being able to grade, properly grade my iPhone footage. Along with the iPhone, it comes with this chest mount. It's just a GoPro regular chest mount. And by the way, anything that I'm gonna state in this video or what's in my bag, you can find it down in the description which will link you to Amazon. I use, yeah, just this GoPro chest mount, which then has, if I just unclip it here, has another mount that clips onto the chest mount here. Uh, and then on top of this GoPro mount is this uh, iPhone mount. So when I'm out shooting a POV video, I can just quickly take it off, get the phone out, keep recording, say what I need to say, and then chuck it straight back on my chest. And I've just found, I don't know, simplicity is key when filming YouTube videos. Things can get so hectic and trying to carry around so many different cameras. Now just simplifying it to filming on the iPhone has really helped me out uh, and allowed me to focus more on my photography. Let's move on to lenses. Now, at no point do I have all of these lenses in my bag. I mainly bring out with me my 24mm f1.4 from Sigma 
my 35 f1.4 from Sony and my 105 f1.4 from Sigma. That is from over the past couple of months recently is what ends up in my bag most times or doesn't really come out. So anyway, let's start at the biggest millimeter length. Right here we have still using the old ancient Mark 1 7200 F2.8 G Master from Sony. And on the back here, I have a 1.4 times teleconverter. Now I chose the 1.4 times converter versus the times two because when I, st when I stick this on, it makes my lens into an F4 versus a times two making it 5.6, I believe. But I just didn't want to compromise my aperture too much. So that's why I went for the 1.4 which would just give me a little bit more range without, yeah, like I said, compromising my aperture too much. Sigma have now finally released the 7200 2.8 for Sony E mount and an L mount, I believe as well, which is also 150 grams lighter than this one. The Mark II version of this lens is about 450 grams lighter, if I'm not mistaken, or around 400 grams lighter, which is a night and day difference in your bag and in your hand. So, That'll be up to me in the near future to decide what I'm gonna get. But I think I'm leaning towards the Sigma because it's just incredibly more affordable. Then next, the ye old faithful Sigma 105. If you've watched any of my other videos, especially with this lens in it, you'll know how much I love this lens. It is an absolute mammoth, Goliath of a lens. Uh, it's incredibly heavy, but it does make you look really professional and it makes you look like you really know what you're doing when you rock up on a shoot with this thing. And to be honest, it just takes the best photos. So I absolutely love this lens. Goes down in the history as my favorite lens. So that's why it's pretty much always with me. Next up, we have the 105 as well, but this is the 105 macro from Sigma, which is an F 2.8 lens. Sometimes I like to bring this one out um, just because it has a, a little bit of a different look to it. It's a bit more of a buttery look to it, but also it allows me to get incredibly close to things. And sometimes when I'm out on a car shoot or shooting something for a brand, I do like to get some detailed shots with this one because it just gives you a completely different perspective. 85, 1.4 from Sigma. This lens unfortunately doesn't get used as much anymore pretty much since I got the 105. The only time I'll bring this out is maybe if I'm doing some street photography. It's a lot lighter. It's a lot lighter in the bag, a lot lighter in the hand. If I'm in a bit more of a tighter space, mainly when I'm shooting a car, if I know just from past experiences that the 105 is gonna be too much lens for the area, then I might bring the 85 with me. But like I said, it, it really doesn't get used as much as it used to. 24 to 70, 2.8, also from Sigma. This is a really solid lens. I started out using this a lot more, but also goes in the same boat with the 85. It really doesn't come out as much as it used to. There's two reasons as to why I don't really use this lens that much anymore. It's a phenomenal lens and it's extremely versatile. However, I just prefer shooting on prime lenses. When you're with a prime lens, you just think differently with your photography. You have to get a bit closer or a bit further away depending on what lens you're shooting. But when you've got a prime lens on, you're really starting to think and see things from that perspective. If I've got a 35 mil on, I'm sort of planning my shots being like, okay, where would 35, where would a 35 millimeter lens work here? Where there is a 2470, you can just get a bit lazy. It, even that <clears throat> sort of goes in the same boat as 72 It just makes you a little bit more lazy if I'm honest. Not to say that there's anything wrong with the lenses, it's just my preferred shooting style. And also prime lenses are gonna be sharper and your photos, they're just gonna be better. So again, it just doesn't come out as often as it used to. Next up, we got the 35mm f1.4 from Sony. Now, this has replaced 35 1.4 from Sigma, only because this was actually a gift from Sony on my New York trip when I was shooting the campaign for the A7C Mark II. And after we finished shooting, they gifted me the Sony 35. And <laughs> this is just such a good lens, man. <laughs> it's uh, there's nothing wrong with the, the Sigma 35. Uh, please don't hate me, Sigma. But it is shooting a Sony lens natively on Sony. It It is it is very nice. It feels very nice. Although I wouldn't be saying that if I bought it. You know, I'd be like, fuck, I just lost a lot of money where I could have just bought a Sigma 35 
and had the same effect. So still to this day, the 35 millimeter Sigma is the best bang for your buck lens I think you could get, especially when it comes to prime town. I hear a lot when someone, you know, they've got a kit lens or they've already got a 24 to 70, that's still in the job, but they've, they've heard about prime lenses, they wanna give it a go. I hear 35 mil, 50 and 85 get thrown around a lot, which is the best you sort of wanna go for first. And again, it really just depends on what you're shooting and your shooting style. My first ever prime lens was a 35 millimeter Sigma and still to this day, I still use it. After that, I've got the Sony 16-35 to f2.8 G Master. It's a bloody mouthful to say. It's actually what I'm filming on right now. So I just, that's 16, that's 35. You've got a pretty good range on it, you know? And not only do I use it for vlogging and stuff, especially on this camera or when I'm filming it's in my room, but I also use it for photography quite a bit, uh, especially if I'm out shooting in a built up area of a city. I love to have a wide angle lens. Definitely comes in handy a lot for shoots, especially when I'm shooting things like long exposures and that. Having a wide angle lens definitely just makes you look differently at photography. And last but not least, this rarely comes out with me to be honest. And it's not even mine, it's actually Liam's. This is a Samyang uh, eight millimeter fisheye, which is, <laughs> it is a 2.8 lens. This thing's a lot of fun. It's a stupid lens. It's not for jobs and take, like when I wanna be serious or whatever, if I'm actually trying to take a photo, I'll pick a different lens. But it is just so much fun to shoot on because it looks so ridiculous. So this comes out every now and again. We'll shoot something on the fisheye for just old time's sake or I just wanna have a bit of fun with photography. I feel like, a, you know, little jumping spiders, they got like the eyes that see pretty much in the back of your head. That's pretty much what it feels like using this. You see everything. And most of the time when I'm shooting, you know, you can't just stand there like this. You've got to like poke your bum out and shoot like this because otherwise it's gonna get your legs in it. Anyway, that's a bit of fun. Moving on to drones. It's sort of becoming a problem, like an episode of Hoarders. Uh, I've got enough drones over here to set up a shop, honestly, it's, it's ridiculous. So if you need a drone, let Uncle Mikey know. I'll hook you up. I sort of do see a drone as a type of lens. I'll pick the drone out on a shoot if I deem it necessary for a photo shoot. A lot of the time I am shooting at night, so there's not really much need for a drone. But when I'm on a car shoot or if I'm trying to shoot sort of a big campaign for a car or something, very handy to have a drone with you. The one I'm using at the moment is the Mavic Pro 3. This thing is like having a wide angle lens and a 7200 in the sky at the same time. Like, look at the front of that thing, man. It is, it's scary. Like when this thing is in the air and it's looking at you, it's actually pretty scary to look at. It's got presence, you know? You could rock up to a car mate with this bloody thing. <laughs> so anyway, three versions, they've put these new batteries in. Uh, and if you're not, if there's not too much wind and depending on your flying style, if you're not doing anything too crazy, I've managed to get almost 40 minutes from one of these battery sticks. A lot of my mates use the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro. Those little drones are probably the ones you'd wanna get because they're 249 grams, which technically doesn't make them an unmanned aircraft. It makes them an RC toy. Because of how light it is, it doesn't go into the regulations yet for it to become a, a drone, an unmanned aircraft drone. Now it's time for the most important thing in my camera bag. And that is my very own <laughs> high vis vest. That's right. This is my very own, as you can see, I think there, North Borders high vis media vest. Because I shoot a lot at night, and especially I'm more or less shooting cars and bikes, I'm around roads and I don't know, it can just be a hazard. So having a nice reflective high vis vest make sure I basically get seen on the road and yeah, basically just trying to be safe, you know, like I want to be seen if I'm out on the road and we need to get a quick picture. I generally try to pick places that are, are pretty calm, like dead end streets or dock areas and stuff. But when the old car comes past, it's nice that they can see a high vis vest. So they know that they can slow down and something's going on, you know? So I actually think this is really important to have. Or maybe you're just somewhere you shouldn't be. And as soon as you put one of these on, one piece of fabric turns you from a regular civilian into a specialist. Oh, he's got a high vis vest on. Must be important because otherwise, why would you have a high vis vest? Honestly, such a hack. Small to large is currently sold out. I'm gonna be ordering some more stock of that, but I still have 
uh, the XL ones in stock on my website. So if you're a big boy and you need to be seen, you can get some of those. All right, again, like the drones, I have enough polarizers here to set up a shop. Get a step up ring. I prefer to have uh, polarizers on each one of the lenses instead of having to screw on and screw off because I just don't wanna be screwing around with like which filters where and what lens. Did I leave it at home by accident? Did I put it on a different lens? Like where, I don't wanna be rummaging around in my bag while the sunset's going down and I'm literally racing against the clock. You know, I need, uh, I, I prefer to have polarizers on each one of my lenses when I'm out shooting. I also have a black mist filter, which I keep in my bag uh, and that comes out every now and again. And usually I, I, I probably should get a step up ring for that one because I, at the moment I'm just like sort of holding it while I shoot. Uh, if that's the sort of style I'm going for, then I use it, but it's not that often that I use the black mist. Just do it in post, like laptop. I'm using an Apple MacBook Pro M1 Max with 64 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte of internal storage. I then have a Samsung T5 one terabyte SSD that's connected to the back, which is what I edit all my main projects on. And then once that's done, gets moved onto a hard drive and then backed up to a separate hard drive at home. I know the M2s come out and now the M3s come out. They're really just pumping these things out like crazy. But again, if it ain't broke, you know, why spend the money if you don't need to? The M1 Max is, it's just a beast. It just does everything I need, you know, and it, and it just does it with no lag. It very rarely crashes or gives me any problems. This bag's great because it has a, an SD thing here and batteries here as well. So yeah, spare SD cards always come out with me on a shoot. Micro and regulars usually always keep two spare batteries with me as well. At the top here, it's got some markers. My favorite markers, uh, the acrylic paint markers. This is the small version. I had a, a way bigger one, but I broke it and it spilt everywhere. But these acrylic ones are great and they can do some damage. So I like to keep some markers in my bag just for doodling or whatever. I old habit that I picked up when I was a teenager. And once you start, you just, for some reason, you can't stop. When I'm just on a call, I'm just, I don't know. I like this bag as well because it's got all these little secret compartments all around it, which I like for stashing goodies. But the only thing I really have to put in is an air tag. In the front pocket here, oh sorry. In the front pocket here, AirPods. I always keep a set of wired headphones. You can see there. SD card reader, stickers, a deck of cards. You know, when we're waiting for a plane or whatever, waiting for something to happen, you can just pull out a deck of cards and play a card game, you know. Yeah, g'day mate, I just wanted to tell you that you're a fuckhead. Walkie talkies. With my high vis vest and these on, I look like a construction worker. So funny. Dust puffer, loom cube light. And last but not least is a Peak Designs camera strap. On the rare occasion, I do need to use a camera strap. I'm not a fan of camera straps because even though Peak Designs make great quality products, I just trust my hands more than an object. Before you head off, just wanna let you know, I have nine calendars left for the 2024 car calendar. They come with obviously a different photo for each day of the month here, um, but just some of my favorite car photos I've shot over the past year and a bit into a calendar. And each one comes signed uh, on the back there. I'll leave a link down below, or you can head over to my website, North Borders, and grab yourself one. Thank you to everyone who did buy a calendar, by the way. Yeah, it's just a fun little thing I like to do at the end of the year. It's nice to chuck in your room. I put it in the garage or something to look at while you take a shit. <laughs> that's pretty much everything, more or less, that's in my camera bag. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new in today's video. If you did like this video, maybe you can leave a like down below. Help us out by hitting subscribe. With that all said and done, keep having yourself a shit one and I will see you very soon in the next one. Fuck what's in me camera bag. What's in me pocket? Drug dealer spec. Yep, still using it. Still using me flip phone. I love this thing, man. It's so good. Trying to do me outro. See ya. Ah. <sighs>